be choosing the setting next match. Hey, well, that's a long way to climb, um, but you know, s sliding in there 96th and having a straightforward C being all dungeons and you know nothing too fancy as far as the variations go has a pretty good chance here to make a statement here in the uh, tournament. This is Firewood King's first selection, um, as he is the higher seed of the two. So this setting um, was set by Firewood King. Uh, as we all know, in standard mode, you start in the rain state. We'll still have to rescue Zelda, of course. Um, this being an all-dungeon seed, we may see some more divergence earlier on, as every dungeon has more value. Let's see our weapon of choice, Fire Rod. Well, Fire Rod does give us full magic as well, but we do have to be judicious with our ammunition here, as while we can refill on these pots, um, right next to this uh, 10 arrow chest, we will have very limited magic throughout the rest of the castle, so we have to be very careful. If we had to, we could take an intentional death uh, warp to refill our magic, or find some along the way. Yeah, and triple doesn't work in the rain state, so they really have limited ability to form some bomb for the back of escape this time. And of course, to uh, answer the question of the chat regarding what these uh, symbols mean, since you may be just tuning in, uh, this is all dungeons as the uh, pendant and crystal symbol means. Um, this is standard mode, so it shows Zelda there because we do have to do the escape. Uh, it's, question mark is randomized sword, so that is actually a sword icon. And N is for normal difficulty. Moving on to the uh, rest of the escape, we're not going to see anything too different from these runners. After all, Fire Rod Strat's pretty standard all around. Nothing spooky here going to happen in the basement of the castle here in Halloween, um, but perhaps they wish they could. So, Blastag, what do you think? Six minute escapes for these two? Yeah, Fire Rod is a pretty straightforward weapon. It's not easy to miss, so I think both will do it pretty well this time. So far, we're seeing uh, step by step, um, flame blast by flame blast. We're getting some rupees here in the basement. This will be useful. Um, but we haven't seen anything progression beyond the weapon that we picked up. Yeah, and Tender is uh, slightly behind because he used uh, an additional Fire Rod shop in the hallway to kill two more guards. Unfortunately, they didn't get a bomb drop of them. So, we'll see what comes next. We have a lot of ways to deal with these guards. Nobody's choosing to throw any pots, willing to expend the ammunition. Now, this is the last uh, required kill except for a key rat in the back half. Um, finding a piece of heart, nothing exceptional yet. I almost wish we had the boots so we could show off the fact that uh, Zelda also has running shoes. Yeah, I, but you really don't win lotteries every seed. <laughs> you got that right. Uh, so far, nothing um, confirming that's bad either. Uh, mostly just meh. Uh, Fire Rod's definitely a powerful weapon to have early on in the game, though. Um, as long as we're careful with our magic meter, you can go a pretty long way and kill a lot of things with it. And of course, this does make uh, Eastern Palace potentially a little more viable. Some people who prefer not to go into the dark um, as much may be able to light uh, the lamp in the back half. So if they do find the bow, that may actually make even more sense. Yep. Just as you mentioned before, they're looking for bomb drops. And both got one on the whole way back using the pot killing the green guards. I do see some questions in the chat regarding um, auto save points or where you would restore from. Um, in the castle, it's the entrance until you get to Zelda's cell and rescue her, then it's Zelda's cell itself. Uh, once you cross past this mantle here going into the sewers, this becomes your uh, restore point. Interestingly enough, both runners have uh, picked up some extra magic on the way through, and they picked up different uh, pots. Firewood King actually probably spending a little more time to go left. Ouch, rough snake RNG, unfortunately, for Shrenter. Alright, so I gotta ask Blastag, do you think either of them are gonna remember uh, 
Or no, they already found the map. Never mind. I thought they're gonna remember not to open sanctuary chests, but uh, so sanctuary chest is actually tied into the dungeon items for this uh, Hyrule Castle escape. If you ever didn't know that, so if you haven't found the map by that point, you can save three seconds. Trinter's Kirek cooperated, while Firewood did not, but only take a little more. So they both at least got a key. Either way, though, both runners do have a bomb, so we will see from both sides what these three items are today. Well, I saw people asking about stun prizes. That boomerang is going to help us along. And as it's been mentioned in chat, that will give us access to the stun prize, which typically would be uh, within a set pool, a prize pack, so to speak, um, for every enemy type in the game. I think there's like seven of them total. Um, but in randomizer, it's just one type of item uh, for the stun prize, at least for killing on regular drops. That's also randomized. Got that mixed up there for a second. So out of escape. And Link's house, the runners got four. He's a hard, a hard container and a blue marine. Nothing special. And we have a quick red check. Uh, Eastern crystal number five, crystal number three, and Hera is the green pendant. Well, we haven't found a way to glean any useful information from that just yet. Uh, we still have a lot of items to check before we really know where we're heading, but that's definitely going to be good to reference. Um, I don't believe either has killed four... Well, they have killed four enemies, um, so that's our Tier 2 tree pull of uh, green rupees, which is not useful at all. But we will see Tier 1 eventually. Oh... Uh, well, it's all dungeon. Agni is always required, but that's hammer on Lumberjack Tree. <laughs> I get the feeling we're gonna be there a little sooner rather than later. Also, that also means we need the boots to get the uh, hammer as well, because you need that in order to open up the lumberjack uh, tree. So that's an interesting boots lock situation we've discovered here just seven and a half minutes into the race. Uh, some bouncing loads lost with just in time. Hey. Well, it's... never mind then. Come tell us blessing. Interesting boots lock situation we've resolved exactly 15 seconds later. So, uh, stun price, uh, it can be anything that can drop, so that's uh, bombs, uh, arrows, uh, any kind of rupees, and any kind of magic, or even a heart. Yo, so, um, if you speak the leather, it shall arrive, right? That's how it goes. That's another part of uh, Agony Puzzle as required, that's a lamp. Also, of course, everyone who's uh, keeping track at home, remembering, of course, that we need to enter Aghanim's Tower uh, with, you know, either Master Sword or Cape. So we're definitely keeping an eye out for both of those items. We'll need two swords to get there uh, to that point if we're going to go that route. And it would be a difficult climb. We really don't have any weapons we can rely on and no magic meter that we can count on for an entire ascent. Uh, we will need at least one sword in order to cut open that uh, curtain. Nevertheless, definitely seems to be pointing us in that direction. Um, we did pick up the powder as well, so uh, we can't actually go to the magic bat until we get that hammer, but that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, and it's one of the best safety, safety items in the randomizer. You'll even see in NMG, people with uh, sub-130 times still haven't given up the powder, although you might get some uh, shifty looks from people who are really fast at the game. We are cash flush so far, though. 400 plus for both of our runners. Finding the mirror here in the well and the flippers. Uh, with both uh, 
with mirror, uh, you can access the magic bag without the hammer if you have dark world access. And on top of that, having the flippers does give us a couple of extra locations to check on our first cycle through the light world. Uh, and we also pick up a sword, so Agonim's Tower, not that far away. Also, a big shout out to Uzi Tala throwing out a bunch of uh, gift subs in Chad. Nicely done. Chicken Shack today is going to give us a refund on our bombs, it looks like. I'm sorry, 20 rupees, but effectively the same thing, right? Yeah, 24 for bomb, it's cheaper than what the bottle vendor just sold us, 100 for 6, uh, 100 for 3. Absolutely true, better at math than I am. So we're running shy on items here in Kakariko Village, gonna make our way down towards the south side. Uh, we do have the library, which is actually accessible, and we do actually pick up a can of Burna, which in normal mode fully functions, so that's pretty useful safety as well. That's some extra blueberries on the library. Might be useful on Minimal Cave, but they have a sword, so they don't actually need that. Well, I gotta think, if you're gonna commit to um, doing all this with boots, you're definitely gonna go through the race game. It's a uh, custom, I would think, almost. But it's not gonna give us much, so we'll save and quit out of there. So I believe uh, South Shore is the obvious choice here. Um, can't imagine why someone would want to go Eastern first, but if you wanted to play your opponent, I mean, that's one opportunity. Yep, they are going... The firewood is going south short, the den to the Minwar cave. Then with flippers, you can, you can choose between the Ice Rock cave or the Zora area in Hobo. I find it pretty interesting that Trenter did stop to pick up the 20 rupees at the race game. Uh, this does put him a little closer to 400, which would get him close to 500, finding 100 anywhere. Um, you know, one chest and then you have Zora. You also have flippers at this point. I kind of like where his head's at. Yeah, you, you already did a quick race game halfway, might as well finish that. Yes, and while this does represent a handful of seconds difference for Firework King and Trenter, that could end up being the difference. This has been pretty straightforward and linear um, throughout the Sphere 1 locations, uh, really pointing us to where we're probably going to be going for the rest of this. Uh, Mini Moldorm Cave here, though, a little bit of execution. This is uh, kind of annoying to kill these. I'm uh, kind of surprised to see that nobody's checked the stun prize yet. Wow, this thief. Having nothing but uh, Bumble's this cave, but Bumble is a good weapon if you have enough magic. Yeah, and we do actually have the sword we need to use it, so I mean, we're definitely in the right combination of items to make use of that in the seed. But with boots, nobody's going this way without checking uh, Ice Rod Cave. There is an opportunity for a water dash if anybody wants to set it up to be a little quicker on um, heading out of here if they want to go towards Lake Hylia. Looks like Firewood King might be approaching the lake from the other location so he can check the Hylia Island item a little faster. This does also give him an opportunity to buy bombs. Uh, the shop is right over here and you can expect to find some rupees in um, Eastern Palace if you wish to farm some rupees. We find a uh, heart container so he's not going to waste any other time here in Lake Hylia. So looks like Firewood King is going to Eastern, it's not going to be checking the sword items. Meanwhile, Tendrus is setting up the water walk you just mentioned. Yep, when you're um, dashing alongside a pit, the game gives uh, Link some pretty weird properties. And when you uh, dash and jump off of a vertical ledge into the water, you can actually walk on water. 
Uh, with boots, this is really valuable because you can dash to places like Hobo extremely quickly. Uh, this is a pretty healthy time save over Firewood King. He's about to almost overtake him. Well, there's the high five. Uh, pretty quick to catch up using the um, knowledge of minor glitches. Perhaps Firewood King didn't expect to find anything. It looks like both are going to head to Waterfall Fishing. Uh, Firewood need a lot more than Tentra for the Zora item, so Tentra only need a big 20. Yeah, and a big 20 is a pretty common find in this cave, so I mean, even the ledge would be something to consider. Um, Firewood King with a hope and a prayer that he's going to find a 300 in here. Well, he is going to save some money on a bottle by switching to uh, Waterfall Cave for insurance, but uh, <laughs> we'll get that out of it. And the cape as well, so the bee in the bottle, potentially one of the only weapons available going up the, uh, the that can kill some of the more tough uh, enemies. <laughs> Not going to have the rupees, unfortunately, for Zora. And we just found a cape completing the Eggman puzzle. So, but I don't think they'll be going there before the Moon Pearl so they can actually explore more of Dark World. That's true, without that Moon Pearl, we are a fish out of water at that point. Um, although it will be useful to still get that hammer, I mean, that's going to be our Dark World access um, potentially. I guess it's, um, you know, kind of tough to go to Eastern Palace at this point, or choose between that and Aghanim, because you know you're going to have that hammer, and hammer gives you so much. Um, perhaps Firewood King realizes that Trenter's going to have to do it anyway, and wants to figure out what's over here first. Trenter is forming rupees, not exactly an ideal situation to be in. I'm not sure if I saw that correctly, but I believe Trenter also found out that a stun prize was a full magic refill, it appeared. I don't think so, he just slashed the the Zora four times. Oh, okay, so that's just the regular drop, okay. Uh, one thing you may notice, if you have the boomerang equipped while you're on this screen that uh, Firewood King's on right now, um, you can actually stun the Armo statues, and that will reduce lag on the screen if you're trying to get to Eastern Palace as fast as possible and save every frame you can. In Hwa I really don't want to go to... go to Eastern. It's going to check Ina's cave first. And as we trudge along with that, um, also something to note is that these runners do have boots for these dungeons, so Eastern Palace, which would normally be a big time sink, uh, makes a little more sense if you can run through the whole thing pretty quickly. We find a Master Sword on Desert Ledge, but we have no way to get to it. I guess it'd be pretty funny if Aguinas Cave had that book. We'll see real soon. Although, um, you gotta wonder, I mean, do you think Firewood King would go check the desert area if he found the book here? Well, there's Tinter's store found. Oh, Not that's like a, a slap in the face. <laughs> I'd be pretty salty about that myself. Nevertheless, has the rupees when the time comes, and does have a mirror from which to go there with catfish. So, I mean, knowing where the hammer is, waiting on a glove, maybe that does make sense to hold off on anyway. Yeah, and Tenfren is going to go defeat Agnum and claim his hammer right after. Yeah, now's the time. Um, lacking a bow, Firewood King does get to see a hint here. Um, piece of heart held by someone friendly that can refer to several different NPCs. Know that on current equipment, uh, using fire rod or bumbles are both good choice on these cards. 
Yeah, if you use Bombos, you will save magic at the expense of time, as the animation is pretty slow, but it is a pretty surefire way to get through. Um, pun intended, I guess. Uh, we do not, or we do have a lamp. Okay, yeah, no problems here through the, um, the ascend sequence. This would be a nightmare to do this in the dark, but somebody who, say, perhaps was really gung-ho and wanted to go after it um, in a different exploration of the overworld could potentially save time doing so. I, I would struggle with it personally. Looking at Tracker, it looks like Fire King found another bottle in Easter and not much else. And he's heading to Agnum's as well. Pretty interesting just 10 minutes ago to have seen them um, high-fiving at Hobo and, you know, a quick change of the lead by an entire, you know, castle climb at this point. I mean, Firewood still have all the Eastern checks in hand, and those are probably going to be required either way, so we are... So I still think Firewood has a slight lead. Yeah, you do get to uh, go pretty much straight to the back um, when you do go back to Eastern Palace. And we do have to do every single dungeon, so there's no reason that, you know, you would expect his opponent to not have to go there as well. Uh, the double dip hurts, but with boots, it's not as bad. You know, Firewood King is having a little trouble with the Golden Gods. In. Did you know where Tendron find that full magic drop? I did not see where uh, Trent or Trenter found the uh, full magic drop in Zora. Yeah, he was farming rupees and got reward in a very different kind of <laughs> way. Wait, are you saying Trenter just got a fair, very different reward? Yep. I see what you did there. Uh, gonna blaze right past through this room though. We want none of that. One of the toughest things about the room the Firewood King's in right now, the uh, Dark Maze, is that it is really difficult to go through here without alerting the guards. Um, having to do so means you have to fight through them, um, when you can actually manipulate their patrol routes to never even bother with them. Uh, so this Aghanim 1 fight's pretty straightforward, though. In the vanilla game, it's a 5 attack cycle. It still repeats that here in Randomizer. Uh, but we have a set RNG between both runners, so we'll see the same number of time-wasting as we like to call them blue ball attacks. Uh, which you cannot reflect. This is good old Zelda Volleyball at its best. Uh, started here in A Link to the Past. We need six shots to destroy him. First one's always going to be reflectable. Two, three, and four have a 50-50 chance normally. And the fifth one's a lightning attack we can do nothing with. Here's our first blue ball. Ah, yes, the time when all NMG runs die. Uh, the very worst possible combination you can get if you hit every hittable shot is 15. Uh, it's like 1 32,000. It's like 2 to the 15. Uh, 32,000 chance. Uh, getting it to happen more than once in your lifetime is pretty rare. Yeah, I believe if you want to experience that, there's a uh, YouTube. YouTube video on that. Well, Trenter is a bit of a musician today, uh, keeping tuned to the beat with his sword, uh, banging it against the wall. Wasting uh, no frames, just kind of hanging out because Agnum is a slow fight. There is one thing that you can do if you want to get faster at this fight, because there is actually some manipulation you can do. If you knock Agnum towards the center of the arena, his average warp distance is shorter, saving you frames. So there was a total of five blue balls, I remember. Yeah, it looked like it, and that's fairly common. Ooh. Well, that's our death mountain as this lock we find Agnum as well. And we're also getting a map check. We're finding out Turtle Rock and Swamp Palace are both uh, pendants today.
Uh, some of you may have noticed that, you know, naturally the maiden's bunny link sprite is, you know, going to be blind. Makes sense. All right, well, armed with the flute, Trenter has just one place to go. There's a statue in the middle of uh, Kakariko that we like to play a certain melody in front of. We get a bird companion and a lot more access to the world. We've had the um, lamp for a while, but no gloves, so this is our first way to get to the mountain. Yep, but before that, we're getting getting the hammer, and Tendra just checked the stun, stun price. It's a heart. That could potentially be useful in a bind. Um, lots of places where you can stun an enemy and get that, since every single stunned enemy will drop that, with um, the exception of expected guaranteed drops like keys. And Pendra just a, a, attempt to pull that tree, but it doesn't really work that way. Uh, after beating, beating Eglin, the tree you can pull changes, so you cannot pull that one anymore. Oh yeah, that's true, they uh, change locations. Um, that's commonly forgotten. And there's also one at the uh, the base. Isn't there one at the base of the pyramid here? I know there's one you can dash into for a fairy, um, but Trenter will be the first one to pick up his hammer not too long, um, or not too far ahead of where you would be in an NMG run, interestingly enough, having defeated Aghanim. Uh 26 minutes in though, we'll have access to the Dark World, no Moon Pearl yet. So, uh, Blastag, you get that hammer, um, you know, I mean, where do you start looking? I mean, you are in Kakariko, check the bat, and you flew to, to Death Mother because the hammer didn't really open anything else without a glove. Seems pretty straightforward to me, gives us Tower of Hera as well with that mirror. Naturally, Chad has decided to find the most annoying scenario possible, which would be Pearl on uh, Zora, which both of these runners would probably think they lost the race when they find that out. We have not confirmed that, though, but if it does happen, I, I feel bad for both of them. Oh, uh, where is Tendra going? You probably think he has some gloves he wants to assess Dark World, maybe? I'm not sure. Well, you do have the hammer pegs on this side. Um, you can still access um, Dark World from this way. Uh, you don't have any glove. You need at least power gloves to do that. Oh, right. Pick up the rock. <laughs> oh, he's here for the magic. Now, magic, actually, that's a really good um, location. On the other side, you can actually pick up apples if you uh, dash into the tree just below the north entrance there. Um, both are really useful restocks in harder difficulties. As you mentioned, though, uh, the uh, back cave coming up. Yep, looks like he knows what he's doing, but we don't. So, so that's why he's the player. We are the commentators. Fair enough. Today, though, for our troubles, the bat will reward us with a potential uh, health refill. Unfortunately, only twenty-five percent chance of that, depending on how you progress. Yeah, Death Mountain seems like the obvious choice. Um, we mentioned before that we can go up to the top, but Trenter is also remembering that you can rescue the old man who will give you an item as well, and give you a save and quit location. And it looks like Firewood King with less, a tiny little bit of magic was not enough to use the powder, so he's going to orphan this location and go to Death Mountain as well. You know, it's tough in a way, but as long as Firewood King doesn't get stopped at any point later on uh, may potentially save a fair amount of time on Trenter here. So I think uh, chat, uh, my uh, trackable cave can have pearl, but only if we find the, the mid somewhere here. Uh -huh. 
and that being said, I mean, there are a lot of items on the right side of the mountain. Uh, would not be that surprising to find more than one lift upgrade on the mountain. Uh, we would probably hope to find at least one. Uh, some good use of minor glitches, though, using uh, something called Super Speed, uh, which you can activate through a derivation of it called Spin Speed. If you charge and hold uh, Sword Spin and then use the dash button on the next frame after you release it, the game gets confused about what movement speed Link's currently at. When you touch a vertical staircase like the one on the west side of the mountain and walk north or south off of it, uh, you'll be running, you'll be walking at the speed that you run. Tinger decided not to check the hint tile here on Special Rock because it's a quick 20 and this, he made a correct choice as this was a community hint uh, marked by the lake face. I like to use that uh, emoticon as a complete replacement for like sheepish. I think that's what that really does describe. Tender find a small key in first chest of Hera and well a moon then. pearl. Well, that's a um, pretty strange place to find it in some circles. Um, but today we will have to go to the basement. Uh, Trencher's going to wait it out using a bomb and standing on top of the crystal switch as it changes over, giving him unlimited invincibility frames until he steps off. And think yeah, while the... Really go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, meanwhile, the, the hint tile here in the first tile of room of Hera is old news. Cave is underwater. We already got that. Yeah, that's the one of the downsides of the new hint system. Is sometimes you uncover something you already know, and it's almost kind of angry. Firewood King is going to put his name to the test, though, and try to use... Oh, no, he doesn't have enough magic to use the fire rod. I think he was trying to, though. Up the tower we go, though, and there is actually another hint tile later on in the tower, as well as the other item locations. So, Trencher's going to go all the way through, and of course, we're not skipping any bosses today. So far, they're using a, a little trick. If you start dash while holding your sword, when you plink the tile, your sword will not go back down. You don't use. You can hold a sword for as long as you can that way. And this can be useful in other places as well. Desert Palace does have an opportunity for you to dash through a sand pit monster um, by putting that uh, to your advantage. Cold stare as well. Um, definitely a boss if you have tempered sword that benefits from using sword pokes and poke dashes. Uh, we did see an intentional death warp from Firewood King getting his uh, health refill in the process. Um, getting back to the entrance of the dungeon doesn't really take a whole lot longer. We do find that book in the uh, big chest today, so maybe that desert isn't that far away. It would certainly be very quick to get there. Yep, but I would still uh, check the Death Mount, East Death Mountain first. If we found uh, another another glove, we can just mirror there. We don't have to wait for the boot captain. And boot here is actually pretty decent as they can check the Easter template as well. Yeah, that Spiral Cave is a lot less painful. We saw a really nice bomb jump from Firewood King. Um, one of the nice advantages of having boots is that you can bonk against the wall, saving yourself uh, the window that you can bomb from. Uh, it's six pixels wide compared to two if you're not dashing. Firewood King didn't even dash. Uh, pretty confident at the regular setup. Well, we saw Trencher use the hammer and Firewood King's got it uh, equipped as well. I mean, this is equivalent to Tempered Sword damage against Moldworm. Of 
good old 10 arrows on Ether tablets. There's a lot of one of those in Hyrule now. That the upgrade is now in Waterfall of Wishing. Yeah, that's true. We took a uh, return back to the vanilla game uh, where you can go to the uh, Pond of Happiness, I believe it's called, uh, to buy your capacity upgrades. Very few people do, but it's available. We did find another sword upgrade on the Floating Island as well. So if we can get to Dark Death Mountain, that's a pretty nice advantage. Well, we have picked up our shield um, on Trenter's side. Fire River King will, of course, pick it up as well. Uh, this only blocks arrows, but that is still useful. Yeah, uh, especially when you're going to swap past the the enemy layer. I think that's Moblings. Uh, shoots their spears and fighters, fighters shoot shield actually block those. Uh, yeah, you're talking about the enemy at the entrance of the dungeon, yep. Wow, bottles of plenty uh, and something to fill them with. Uh, we found a bug net and a blue potion. The blue potion is extra nice because that will give us a magic refill option. Yeah, they're now back at on top of the mountain. They can go chest by cave if they the runners want to. Yeah, it certainly makes sense to check it if you're going to head back across the mountain. Um, thinking of other options, you know, being that they're available, uh, this is a place where you kind of have to make a gut check and decide how you want to proceed going forward. Trenter is going to depart. It would take some time to go check that, um, but it is interesting to leave it. I think because he saw that sword earlier, this becomes more appealing. Yep, and it's a completable dungeon. <laughs> Seeing some uh, excellent dispatchering of the Moldorms on Firewood King's side. Uh, having a bit of a party there for a minute, but a nice uh, spin slash to get all three at the same time. He's going to save and quit out of this situation, though, opting to restart potentially with a health refill at Mountain Cave. I think that's a time save. We do have another hint tile here. Didn't we already saw that Tintel back on Hera? An, a unique item is in Lost Woods. Uh, no, I think we had the cape underwater. No, the second Tintel. It's it's that it's that line as well. I think they can repeat. Yeah, they sure can. Yeah, hints not being so helpful today. On the bright side, as you mentioned, we can complete the dungeon. Uh, however, Firewood King has taken a different path, um, using his knowledge of the game world to flew to five uh, to get to Hype Cave immediately. This is five items, and it's going to be more item dense than what Trenter is doing right now. Yep, uh, lacking uh, lacking a glove, or ho more importantly, the hook shot. He can't exactly go to the other side of the river. That glove, though, is a welcome find, uh, the big, you know, thing that we're finding here. Of course, the fire shield, not bad. Uh, but the first lift upgrade, definitely going to give us more flexibility in traversing the overworld. Yep, now he can enter the dark world from all, uh, all three portals in uh, all, at the portal at Carrico to for the north dark world stuff. However, the convenience of the mirror cannot be ignored. Firewood King is also uh, going to check K45 here, as we like to call it. Uh, Trenter appears to be on the same hunt, and that's a Kana Samaria. Wow. 
unfortunately for now, not a lot of implications from that. I would say that that item is a little more useful to us right now, though. Printer taking his uh, hammer to the to the artist side of the dark world. He's going to check parts of darkness. Maybe turning the green pen as well. Yeah, it's hard to ignore how good that combo is. Uh, you're right here, you may as well portal, and looks like Trencher's got that on the mind. Uh, we're finding the other lift upgrade at the dig game. Firewood King finding a last possible location to save him from having to do the loop uh, back around to the other portal. And was that a Sanctuary Heart? I think that's a hard piece refill. Okay, I got excited there. Well, so you gotta think that Trenter is probably gonna be heading mostly in the same direction after Palace of Darkness. Doesn't need a lift upgrade to do any of this dungeon. Um, so, I mean, this can work out pretty well. Also, entering Palace of Darkness without bow is also a pretty big gamble in itself. Yeah, and of course, I think the rationale for a lot of people is, you know, I'm likely to have my opponent need to do what I'm doing anyway may think that, hey, it's probably going to be both of us doing this. Um, but we'll find out very quickly if it's bow locked. We can, of course, use the um, camera manipulation glitch with a bottle and a potion uh, to get around that if need be. And we are bow locked. <laughs> Trenter there almost using the potion on accident. Well, we mentioned before that Firewood King did not have the magic. Firewood King does now. Uh, we'll find his disappointment here in uh, the back cave, but is able to do all of this in one sequence. So, I mean, he is able to combo this together with the Dark World area. Uh, here's the potion glitch. Yep, it's coming up. Uh, when you drink a potion while walking towards the tower, you this. Uh, you misalign the grid so you can walk the mimix off screen because the screen is not locked and the door opens as if they are dead. Yeah, the game just cannot determine whether or not there's actually enemies in there when you do this. Uh, the reason that this works is because both of those rooms are existing on what's called a super tile, a segment of the game that's been loaded in. Um, and while you're transitioning across them, using the potion is what dislodges that camera. Uh, so that's why we're able to manipulate it. You can use it in a couple of other locations potentially, but that's the biggest one that has applications in randomizer. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, in Palace of Darkest Hinta, we know that there's a unique item that requires the cape. Well, that's something on Bumper Ledge then, isn't it? I'm not sure. You can also refer to Spy Cave, maybe? Can, can you refer to number, number check? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I get the feeling that it is just Bumper Cave, that specific item description, but that may have changed. It looks like chat's confirming that that's, that's the case, so we will end up checking that. Uh, no reason that anybody would skip that at this point. So, Thieves Town Fighter Sword, no problem, right? I mean, as, as boss fight is concerned, that there's no difference other than the shorter sword. Absolutely the case. Nine hits no matter what weapon you're using, as long as it works um, on the boss. The mid is in digging game, while the other glove is in hype cave, both in the south loop of dark, dark world. Well, 
Well, both runners have found their respective big keys. Firewood King having rounded out the front half of Thieves Town will make his way to the back. Um, we'll have another hint tile opportunity in there as well. Taking a wrong turn, going to a boss room that is empty. I'm kind of wondering if he was trying to reset the position of the skeleton, but he's not low in health, so uh, I'm not sure. Trenter, however, is low on health, potentially setting up a death warp now that they're low on health. Could be. I mean, having a mirror, a uh, death warp is exactly required, and there's no check after this big chest anyway. He could just save and quit. Fair enough. Uh, skating through there, no problems. Um, but that's everything we're going to do there. We need the bow to go any further as Helmsor King is blocked by a, um, an eye statue that you have to shoot with that arrow. So, uh, did you see what the Steve's tongue hint? Oh no, I did not catch that. Looks like chat caught that a unique item is in plain sight. Well, that's super descriptive. Um, we did have the flute out in the open, so that's a possibility. But then again, we did have another hint about Bumper Cave. Either way, though, Firewood King has a blind to take down and a maiden to rescue, whereas the other maiden right now is Hype Cave in it. And there's some more cash we do not need. I mean, they still have to pay off Sora. In the chat, a uh, hint about uh, Gangstar Big Key is on, uh, only exists in Kisanity mode. It will not appear here in Standard. Well, that was a very fast blind fight for uh, Firewood King, knocking out with no major um, issues. Almost as if it was a no major glitches run. Half health down, but, you know, it's taken care of. Seems like Trenter's picked up on the scent, though. Um, having picked up his cane of Samaria, heading the same direction, uh, we'll definitely get that Titan's Mids. Yep, and Firewood with Fire Rod as their starting weapon is going to clean out a Skull Woods as well. Losing a Fire Shield to a Like Like, unfortunately. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but I mean, that is pretty irritating. Shoutouts to uh, Chad, astutely noting that it will save frames on lag, as the shield does cost the Super Nintendo engine something to render. Well, Firewood King didn't waste a lot of time heading to the back. Um, we'll bother to check that chest before going to Mothula. Nothing wrong with doing it uh, before or after realizing the item count. There are two unique item locations within uh, Skull Woods, and we found none of the dungeon items yet.
looks like Tentra is doing as goals first, then Sieves Town. One of the most effective uh, bunny beams, aka bubbles, you'll find in the game, uh, giving Firewood King some uh, annoyances heading towards Mothula, but Firewood King is all the way through here. Uh, does have Master Sword and about a third of a magic meter. This is a pretty doable fight. Uh, where was... Yo. Uh, yo, beast rats. <laughs> Double beast strats. Beast does fighter sword damage. Uh, doesn't work on most bosses, but it works here. Well, Firewood King clearly knows how to please the crowd. Uh, <laughs> and B-Torp, I think. By the way, where was Firewood's second sword? Huh. Um. Oh, jeez. Uh, it was in Thieves Town. Uh, that was the chest right before the um, right next to the bombable floor. So we uh, we located all four all four swords, I guess. Yeah, that floating island would be the last one our runners will be able to access. Um, but yeah, we know where all four of them are now. So Trenter is going to be getting that. Tempered Sword a little bit later. It's kind of unfortunate to be going to uh, Skull Woods first because that, you know, Tempered Sword is pretty good for Mafia. Will not lose time on uh, Firewood King, though, who also has Master Sword only. Well, we saw that uh, Firewood King used quite a lot of magic um, in the back half of Skull Woods. Trenter here is going to check the pedestal. A hard container. I mean, we're getting all the pendants anyway, but we're not going to claim this item. Yeah, the actual value of checking the pedestal definitely increases in all dungeons. Although it's still a pretty big long shot, um, probably not the hook shot either. Pretty hard to be the hook shot when the swamp is dependent. Hey now, I'm making puns over here. Yeah. Sorry, I missed that. Fair enough. Um, but I was mentioning before that Firewood King used the Fire Rod quite a lot uh, to take care of these mummies. Trenter here is going to exchange some time to save that magic. I mean, if I were in his situation, well, I would just bumble it. It still saves some magic, but it's a lot faster than what it's doing right now. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a lot of time to sink into it. So, I mean, this could potentially reflect Trenter not feeling super confident in the Mothula fight without that magic. I mean, we're switching to Lamp as well, um, going almost overboard to keep this magic meter full. Uh, but, I mean, it's a safety strat. Meanwhile, Farouk King is on a, a bumper cave, and he has saw that unique item being Easter Tab uh, Medallion. No reason not to pick it up. Uh, we still don't know what Misery Mire or Turtle Rock will be locked by. Uh, the Ether potentially not needed, but pretty likely. Uh, it's one of the fastest medallion to use, so I will give up just for Ganon's Tower, in fact. Well, not to be outdone with um, checking things, Firewood will continue going north along the Dark World. Gonna get that... Uh, Ledge item in the graveyard, half magic, very nice find. Now, Trenter here is taking advantage of sword strafing. If you have your sword outstretched, you can uh, dash, le or not dash, you can slide left and right horizontally um, to kind of dodge those beams a little better. 
Um, it's a little chaotic to move on or to do the fight on the moving floor, but Trenter has survived and actually only used half the magic meter to do so. It's a pretty good fight. Silver arrows and Kingston. King is hiding the secret of sealing cannon in his, in his, in his resting place. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, everything here in the graveyard area has been pretty valuable. It sure, certainly, seem, certainly feels like royalty walking through there. Well, we saw before that neither of our runners were able to check Zora. Firewood King potentially returning with vengeance. Yeah, Catfish and Zora. Uh, now or never. Oh, uh, to those in chat uh, who don't recognize AG, that, that is the chemical symbol for uh, silver. So that's supposed to be a reference there. There's no, like, quick, faster way. I mean, that's I just, that's silicone. I don't know. All right, well, yet another Ether Medallion here. Uh, Trenter making his way to grab that. Firewood King has already been here before, but saved and quit before he reached this point in Zora's Domain. Uh, we'll be going all the way, spending 500 rupees. We'll find out what the scam artist of the century has for us today. Trenter will have to do the trip as well because it, he didn't have enough rupees for that. When he was here, he was 20 short. And then proceeded to get that 20 in Nagina's cave, uh, Firewood King, not even dignifying the Zora King with the uh, picking up of that heart piece. I can't blame him. Firewood King is going to Meyer area. Uh, makes sense because he hasn't full clear desert. Yeah, so with the Flute and Mirror can com combo both of them together, uh, representing a little bit of a time save over Trenter. However, not getting that sword sooner and not seeing that sword just now. Um, unfortunate, actually. But hopefully we'll be able to check that and won't forget to. And a flash check on the medallion requirement. I did, didn't quite see that, but I think it's quick. Well, I'm sure some of our eagle-eyed chat viewers probably caught that faster than we did. Alright, well, Firewood King's rounding out all of the Meyer area and has not looked at the Desert Ledge at all. Um, this is the opportunity to do so. If he doesn't go south here, that's actually pretty worrying. Alright. <laughs> So the chat, chat is asking about the Puny Fairy. Well, that uh, fairy is not in play before we find the bow because the crystal requires an eastern and path of darkness. Though there is some possibility of something like Hookshot in, in Pyramid Fairy. In the meantime, though, we needed to figure out where we're heading next. Um, Swamp Palace looks pretty good right now. I mean, that's six items. Swamp Palace without Hookshot never looks good, though, so I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think it's uh, like Firewood King is doing the desert area and Mr. Meyer, then it's Ice Palace, or maybe the East a Dark Death Mountain combo into a Turtle Rock without Ice Rod combo. Yeah, I'm trying to fathom what would be the other good choices. Everything seems rough without that hook shot, um, but until we dive somewhere and find it, I mean. I don't know. I we, we saw a qualifier in this tournament that did require you to go into hookshotless hook or hook, hookshotless swamp palace to find the hookshot on the left side. Um, I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised to see someone bold enough to do that today. 
fucked up. And right now the runners is tracing each other's step. So it's a prime time to say if you're enjoying what you're watching, don't forget to follow those runners, Firewood King and Tinder TR. And of course, if you'd like to catch everything going on in this tournament, the um, best way to do so is to follow all of the Speed Gaming channels, Speed Gaming and Speed Gaming 2 through 6. And of course, ALTTP Randomizer, and ALTTP Randomizer 2 through 4. Um, and stay tuned to those because there are going to be a lot of races here in the group stage. Well, as we cross the hour mark, we're about to uh, walk into yet another boss fight. Firewood King's in a great position to be doing this boss fight with Fire Rod and Half Magic. Yep, yeah, with low, the limo just burns to ashes. Well, so the hop RNG wasn't super friendly to Firewood King and a slight miss, but after a third cycle, we should be about uh, squared away here. Trenter almost pulling off a uh, God Pixel Dash. And with that, Firewood King has finished up Desert Palace. We'll be rewarded with a hot 20 rupees and a crystal. Well, with this, Trenter's also about to pick up um, their uh, third sword as well. So both of our runners will have tempered here in a moment. Um, and this is going to be pretty straightforward as far as execution goes. Just remaining to find those one or two elusive items like that hookshot. Yep. Looking more and more likely that the dark is that one is to play. It has the most number of items. You can go into Total Rock. And all the way to a laser bridge with that fire rod. Yeah, and I think if this wasn't all dungeons, um, you know, Pendant Turtle Rock would be a little scarier to do. But I mean, we've seen so many seeds in this in, in this tournament and the last tournament where Turtle Rock play was just always it. Um, there's lots of items to work with there. Uh, Mimic Cave is also included. We have everything we need for that. Uh, Firewood King's going to remember that mushroom, though. Ooh. Mushroom <laughs> leads to Ice Rod. That's a fantastic find when East Desmond is the, the most dense item location. It's most likely going to Turtle Rock now, but Firewood King thinks otherwise, he's hitting the ice. Yeah, having that knowledge, knowing that he can. Well, he has a decent chance of not necessarily go mode in this dungeon but you find that hook shot and you can go mode um or no, no you need the bow as well but e even then you know being able to do this in a pretty straightforward manner not worrying about finding one more item for turtle rock i don't know maybe he's contemplating um his options here that was a pretty lengthy map check there i would feel very confused in this situation if i were a uh, firewood king Out of Trenter's side, though, a pretty straightforward uh, blind fight, not really having any issues at all, um, not having taken damage from the fight until just now. Uh, barely getting away on the uh, third phase, but we'll wrap it up just fine. Uh, is in chat, the mushroom is in my chat. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Trenter would not have been over that direction for um, a minute yet. Although that does seem like a pretty likely place to check pretty soon. Yeah, the information about the Maya Med Medallion is pretty, pretty essential. As we saw Fire Weeking do, though, um, you know, the temptation of doing Blacksmith Chain right now, since you can do all of it, um, pretty irresistible. Even having checked the uh, Magic Bat already, this is still pretty fast overall check to do uh, we could do purple chest as well a 
The Fire Wood King's in one of the laggiest rooms of the game, most Alphos Knights, which you don't see too often uh, besides this dungeon. Um, they actually have a unique feature to them, or at least the way that their uh, vulnerability trigger works. They're actually invincible to taking like a, a killing shot until one of them is knocked down. But once you knock down one of them, both of them are vulnerable. We'll also see a bomb jump here from Firewood King. Um, Ice Palace bomb jump done in one go, very nicely done. Yeah, that's one of the first tricks you, you learn when doing random. I mean, it's one of the first ones you learn in NMG too. If you were attempting to do this dungeon uh, by going straight to the boss and not spending any other time here, um, you could save multiple minutes over doing this the intended route. So uh, doing so in Randomizer does give us some flexibility as far as routing goes, and with the Cane of Samaria, potentially a way to avoid the intended order of the dungeon if we really routed ourselves into a corner. Also, we saw the hook shot. A uh, fire team might need a second bomb jump in the in the in one of the rooms to. Oh, that's the ball in the purple chest. Well, I mentioned it before. It's accessible, pretty easy to do, and that bow is a critical item. We do also have the silvers already, so boss kills also being sped up by this. And that might actually be a pretty good reason to uh, jump into... Oh, we don't, we don't have Quake, that's why. Um, but if we had the Quake, that'd be a good reason to jump in, because you know you can do Vitreous pretty easily. So, we slept both fine uh, before turn and Tendred has not turned the Mushroom yet. I can see his next stop is going to finish up Pod and East turn, both of them. Yeah, neither of these would be straying from the path we need to be on. Uh, Trenter just needs to turn in that mushroom before going up the mountain to avoid sinking a lot of time in against Firewood King. All in all, though, this far into the race, these runners are relatively close together, I would say. Uh, yep. And Firewood King just got a hint on that purple chest. I either need a specialist to unlock. That's pretty helpful for Firewood King because that information uh, was really the biggest advantage that Trenter had. However, it may take a while before you know he even has to go over that way. Um, needing the bow for Easter Palace and Palace of Darkness, but Swamp Palace may be appealing before then. I mean, he, uh, Swamp Palace is never appealing before the hook shot. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I think you would probably check the chest first. Um, Fire King, remembering there's a bubble here, will get that heal very much needed, hard and half to work with. And as far as Fire King is concerned, hook shot can very well be in pod. He has most of Eastern down. Yeah, that's true. Hasn't explored it the same way that uh, Trenter has. Getting some slight uh, graphical errors on uh, Trenter's side. Lamolus can be a bit of a buggy fight at times, uh, making it kind of hard to hit him with arrows, but the second cycle um, fast enough for him. And that is two cycles faster than Firewood King, so Trenter does save some time on that boss fight. Well, it feels like we've been spinning around the drain here in Ice Palace trying to get to the very lowest floor. Half Magic, uh, Bombos, this isn't a bad position to be for the fight, though. <laughs> and that's the last item in Ice Palace, that's the hook shot, so I think that's bow. He know that he got a hint for and a quick quick for Meyer for go mode. Well, that's an insane find rewarded immensely for exhausting every possible chest and location in Ice Palace. Um, patience, diligence being um, 
you know, really put on display here. Firewood King having a very full looking menu, missing just a couple of key items, but he does have that hint. Uh, so probably going to have a little bit of wind in his sails in this fight. I don't know about you, but if I find out most of the information I need for the entire race by an hour and ten minutes, I feel pretty good. Yep, me too. And Coaster with left pop Mitch Firewood just melts. At this point, I almost gotta wonder if you go up to Dark Death Mountain first, um, being that you don't really need that bow to do anything there. Well, he might think that you need items quick and don't want to risk that, and Terry Rocket being quick as well. That's true, nobody's seen it yet. Yeah, so Quake being the odd man out and potentially preventing us from going a lot of places, uh, it may end up being the right play to go up to Turtle Rock right now. We don't know yet. Um, but when we find that Quake, this seed will be turned upside down no matter where our runners are at. Shrenter will be the first one to check out Helmosaur King, though, having completed pretty much the entire dungeon before uh, getting to this point. So pretty quick Jolivant right uh, to the back of this dungeon and should be a pretty fast fight as well. We do have the Silver Arrows, and if we want to, the Tempered Sword is more than enough to defeat this big old turtle. Yep. And if you are feeling accurate, uh, one Silver Arrow to a Jewel will do this trick as well. Yep, so for the fight you're going to see here, you're going to see at least 17 smacks to the face uh, to destroy the uh, face guard here that Helmosaur King wears. You can also do this with a number of bombs. I believe it's either three or four, uh, the way I did it growing up at least. But this is definitely faster and easier and more accurate. Helmosaur RNG not being terrible, uh, but we are just going to do slashes to finish this up as it only takes four with the Tempered Sword to uh, finish up the second phase. Meanwhile, Firewood King turned in the shovel he found, also in Ice Pass, only a big 20 out of that. I like that he uh, dropped the chest in, in his route, knew where he was going to go with it, and just came back to pick it up. That's pretty smart. Oh, and a pretty smart choice here as well, choosing to go to the uh, Dark World portal, portal. This will allow him to check the Bombos tablet um, in the same go. Yep, pretty smart indeed. Alright, so the natural conclusion to make is we do Palace of Darkness, Eastern Palace. Um, have we found everything in Eastern yet, I think is the question, because that could lead us to that medallion we're missing. Also, with that hook shot in Firewood's pocket, a uh, swamp does look tempting. Yeah, certainly a lot better than it did before. Well, 50 for our trouble to go to the Bombos tablet out in the desert. Uh, Firewood King is going to exhaust all opportunity here, though, knowing... I would think in his position, I would feel like I, I'm a little bit ahead, but I'm, both runners have made some interesting and good decisions and have made some double dips and some not perfect decisions. Uh, remains to be seen who's going to find that medallion first. Looks like Firewood King is following up the Eastern pot play. Firewood King would need to uh, search uh, most of pot for a big key in the base, uh, dark basement. Meanwhile, Tentra is almost finished up, uh, halfway through Eastern now. Yeah, so if you were watching 15, 20 minutes ago, you may have thought Trenter was pretty far behind, but this is some of the checks that we were talking about before that take um, less time. You know, if you come back through, you can get through these dungeons pretty quick. Uh, Trenter hasn't done Eastern Palace, but this is pretty fast with boots. 
but firewood king has the uh, uh, entirety of ice pass in hand and we know there's an important item in there so tension need to go that long time i have to think the worst case scenario is that like armos knights have it and trenter goes away from finding that hook shot And Firewood King probably going to feel pretty good about not being bow locked in the next couple moments here because he has the bow. Trender counted his items, uh, skipping the big chest because he has only compass and map left. Also, because I'm seeing you mentioned in chat, a big shout outs to uh, Firewood King opening up Palace of Darkness, choosing to get Kiki a little bit closer as it, if you end your dash just slightly before the cutscene and turn around, uh, Kiki will get a little closer and jump up to the top of the roof, saving some frames. Uh, some pretty smart speedrun knowledge, actually. Looking at a cozy fight here for Trenters. Six silver arrows will do it, but seven if you're like most people and give one to the wall as well. No such mistakes today, just gonna get rewarded with, uh, with a map that we're never gonna use. With this crystal though, the Pyramid Fairies now should... Yeah, and being that we're still looking, um, that's just as good a spot to look as any. With that flute selected, and I think that's the item you select no matter what, leaving this place if you're not going to save and quit. Um, going to head to two, which is the thing we wanted to see Trenter do, uh, as this will be uh, what makes this race a little bit closer together. Um, had he forgotten to do this, he wouldn't have the ice rod to go up to Dark Death Mountain with. It looks like it's going to turn that 500 rupees for a hard piece now. Leaving, leaving catfish alone. Yeah, it always stinks when you can't do them together, but on the bright side, if Trenter does skip catfish altogether, this will end up saving a little bit of time. Not fun to uh, go into Zora's Domain for double uh, heart pieces, though. And disappointment, but Trenger does choose to pick up the uh, heart piece. Maybe thinking maybe some health later will, uh, you know, save his behind. I mean, you already pay the price, might as well pick it up. You know, you got a good point. It's like uh, buying, buying fine caviar and letting it rot. Uh, Trenter with that hammer equipped appears to be heading towards that pyramid fairy, though. For the low price of 100 rupees, you can check two items twice as good as the bottle vendor. Much more time intensive. But we've defeated Aghanim 1, so we do have the shortcut across the uh, castle entrance, so we would mirror um, to the north of the bomb shop and be able to walk through much faster than walking the long way to the right. Yep. So, Blast Egg, maybe you can explain to the audience. Does it seem like the guards here are a little more hostile than they were before? So, 
after beating Agnum 1, the world changes. Uh, there are more guards around the light world, including Inca Rico before getting snooped. So the world is just a, a, a more dangerous place after you beat Agnum. Yeah, so uh, even Usain Bolt, fastest guard in Hyrule, picks up even better running shoes. Uh, you'll notice as you're heading towards other parts of the world, all of those guards are upgraded. Um, so, only getting a glimpse of that on our way to the Pyramid Ferry, which produced absolutely nothing. Uh, but you do get a slight difficulty increase, and on harder difficulties, I think that probably matters more. And we'll be seeing a lot of that in this tournament. One thing that I've noticed is that a lot of runners in their first game of the series um, appear to be trying to do pretty easy settings. I think as these spots become more competitive, as players realize they're playing for their tournament destiny, they're going to start picking some pretty nasty game mode combinations. Uh, so this is a rare treat in this uh, group stage where we actually get to see something pretty straightforward. Well, you, uh, the higher seed only chooses in the first game, so they're... If they want to, uh, I I find it hard to believe a lower seed will choose a difficult seed setting, but maybe it will happen. Yeah, and just as a reminder of the tournament format, um, these there will be three races for each um, opponent in the group stage. So you have five other opponents in your group, 15 races total. They're not a best of three, you just have to do three, and your rankings are based on that. So the first one's picked by the higher seed, as far as the uh, settings go. Second one is picked by the lower seed, and the third one is random, uh, with some ban opportunities for both runners. Uh, so you may end up seeing that. Uh, it won't be so much, you won't see it so much, you know, in public channels, but... Um, you'll see that certain variations are selected completely outside the control of the uh, two runners, with the exception of those vetoes. Firewood King here has a Helmosaur King to smack in the face 17 times, as we discussed before, um, while Trenter's also covering... Um, Ice Palace Grounds, which is exactly where he needs to be to get that hook shot. Both of our runners really narrowing in on their final item. Uh, Firewood King does have the natural advantage of having been looked for the or having been looking for the Quake for quite a while, um, trying to just isolate to that one item. Uh, but Trenter's not that far behind. Yep, uh, Firewood King has uh, most of Ice Palace, and Treasure King have an extra uh, Pyramid Fairy check. And likely Firewood King would do that next. So we'll see how much lead Firewood King has after that check. Oh, and Eastern as well. Yeah, so it's even closer. Uh, wow, I, I had not remembered that he had still needed to do Eastern Palace. I mean, of course, it is boots and hook shot. So, and, and Firewood King has been through here already. Wow, I'm struggling to do the mental math on this. I, I think the Firewood King is still ahead, because uh, Trenter will spend more time searching through here, um, but is pretty well equipped. Yeah, I think a uh, Firewood King is ahead. Uh, maybe, but not by much. I think a minute or two at most. Yeah, and that is certainly not an insurmountable lead. However, we know both runners will end up getting Butter Sword if they sh so wish, um, having really easy access to that on the way to Gans Tower. This is truly an impressive uh, showing from both runners. Neither of them has slowed down really much at all. Um, neither has taken an unintentional death either, so this has been a very clean execution race. I'm kind of interested to see Trenter go back upstairs after finding that big key, perhaps gleaning something from the logic. Um, you can count your keys and, you know, route accordingly. Palace of Darkness is the place we usually see that for most runners. Um, but the knowledge here may end up leading to that hookshot pretty quickly. Well, he just walk away from the hookshot because that's in a big chest. <laughs> oh, it wasn't on the right side. You're right. 
Oh, this is like the more roundabout way then. <laughs> if this was Dungeons and Dragons, we call that a critical miss. A nat one. Um, now, there are tons of bomb jumps in Ice Palace that you can do. The one that Trenter's attempting here is a bit finicky, um, kind of hard to practice depending on different sprites. Um, but this is a way that you can avoid needing the hook shot in this dungeon if you want to fully explore it in the route that he's uh, chosen. Got really close there on the lineup. Um, this is a very frustrating one to do um, if you're having any kind of you know issues with it because that ledge can be unforgiving sometimes. Got it on the fifth try. Uh, so there is a thing about uh, resource management because the upgrades you cannot find them in chests anymore. So most runners will opt to not buy any. So you only have max ten bombs. So those can go away in a whim when you are when you are missing bomb jumps. Yeah, on the bright side, though, still has two to work with. Um, that could have been a pretty hairy situation, because walking the even longer way would have been pretty lousy. Uh, but Firewood King has decided to take the plunge into the water as, into the waters of Swamp Palace, and really just looking for that one item. Gonna find pretty much everything in here pretty quickly. I mean, it's, uh, she wants to uh, couple us Turtle Rock and Gans Tower together. Oh, <laughs> that's go mode. Well, on the bright side, no left-right uh, decisions to be made about which hole you want to drop down on the left side. Uh, you know, we're just going to go right to the boss and we'll be out of here. So, even he type swamp before go mode, he still gets to go mode swamp. You know, choosing to come here a little sooner may have potentially have um, saved some time um, elsewhere, being able to make some decisions, like say, once you found the hookshot here in ice, choosing to not even touch the rest of the dungeon. Um, both of our runners could have benefited from checking Swamp sooner. Either way though, uh, Fire King has a very clear line and a path to his victory. Uh, Trenter has some ground to gain, or ground to recover, but on the bright side, it's all on one straight narrow path. Um, we'll not be going to Misery Mire without Quake, uh, so we'll be heading to Swamp next. Although, I mean, could go to Turtle Rock, uh, but as you mentioned before, I just don't see that to be likely, um, since there's still that unknown question about what's going to open it. Well, Colsier getting away a little bit here from Trenter, um, but not in too much danger, uh, getting it down to the last puff. One thing that if you're having any trouble with your cold stair fights, say things get out of hand, if you destroy one of them, it's very wise to use the lag frames and the animation being uh, slow to try to line up your next couple sword slashes. You can really save yourself in a pinch if you take advantage of the boss exploding. So it's ten, now it's Trenter's turn to decide whether he wants to go to Swamp or the East Dark East Death Mountains. Uh, six guaranteed items in Swamp compared to uh, seven in Death Mountain. Uh, with Terra not guaranteed entry, but if it's enterable, that's five items as well. Looks like Trenter is going to Swamp as well. And he's going, he's going to be pleased about that decision. And isn't that a tough one to make? Um, but it will pay off, and that will give Trenter the best possible chance of hanging in there in this race. Uh, Firewood King's decision to go pretty straightforward with the settings today seems so far to be paying off. And with Firewood King picking up that pendant, we are exactly one Swamp Palace behind here for Trenter. Um, a go mode Swamp Palace at that, though.
So all that's left is execution and my big key hunt and against tower big key hunt. Yep, the hunt is on. We need to find just a couple of things here. This is nearly a 100% completion race at this point. Um, we are almost completely fully equipped. Uh, Firewood King, unfortunately, down two shields <laughs> from Trunter. Uh, that hopefully won't matter too much. Lamolus 2, probably the one room that I could see that being a big deal. Because, yes, that has messed me up before. Me. Fire King managed to find the mirror shield before going to Gans Tower. It wouldn't even matter because it still records your shield progress if your if your shield is eaten, which is pretty handy. Um, definitely gonna help you out in a rough spot. Um, Trunter actually had to use his last bomb to open up the door that held the Go Mode uh, Quake. Kind of a close call there. So Misery Meyer has a lot of different places to go to find your um, your big key, and that's really all we need to get to the basement. Um, we could potentially find it here. Oh, we'll definitely need a small key to you know, progress to rooms where we can open up a big key door. Um, but if we find a big key in the next chest, we have a pretty ideal scenario. Not today. Uh, so Firewood King will be exploring the rest of this dungeon, potentially trying to avoid the cutscene chest. Uh, many people do uh, cycle back around if they are still looking for stuff. Um, we'll hit the switch and come back into this room for this item sometimes. Uh, we'll see in a moment what he chooses to do. Uh, but that is one of the routing divergence opportunities. I'm going to elect to go towards the firelock rooms. Ooh, and there it is. Good thing we have no casting for us today. And we are heading to Petrius with silver arrows in hand. Now there is one ridiculously difficult time save that Trenter may attempt, uh, Zero Cycle Argus, which would save him a handful of seconds, but that would be pretty hype. Come on, Trenter, nope. But uh, it should be a pretty straightforward fight for him as well, as both of them had Tempered Sword and Hookshot to work with here. Um, this is kind of how we would do it in NMG as well, seeing as having this extra sword level actually does make a huge difference in time spent in this fight. You would have to do two slashes per puff if it was a Master Sword. Well, Firewood King, ironically enough, not feeling spooky on Halloween uh, here in the Misery Meyer basement. We'll use the fire rod to hit that crystal uh, switch instead and has to bomb open this wall. I'm wondering if Trenter is going to uh, live up to the, the date and it's a, uh, you know, well-known, renowned fame. Well, actually here, uh, Halloween just, just ended. It's November here now. No fun. Well, it's always Halloween in our hearts, of course. Uh, Firewood yep. King here is going to use some damage boost strats here on Vitreous. This is how you do the NMG fight. Uh, pretty bold with his health count. You mentioned it before, Blast Egg, but there's only a couple of enemies in the game that can survive Silver Arrows. Um, Vitreous takes two shots. Um, Ganon, of course, taking four. And Hokoboku, also known as Pokies, are the only other regular enemy that can take more than one shot. Yep. And Bible King is going to go attempt his last dungeon, uh, second to last, before Ganon's tower, the Total Rock. 
And just as we were with Swamp Palace, um, we were exactly a dungeon apart. Trenter walking into Misery Mire, finishing Mire 2 as Firewood King is departing uh, from the area. Firewood King is heading towards Turtle Rock and has everything he needs. Uh, this should be pretty quick. We might even get to see a sword climb in a moment here. Um, using a hook dash to get the same effect as the spin speed that we talked about earlier. But that's a no on the sword climb. Opted to go right. Firewood King is doing the light work climb uh, because he actually needs to use the portal on Turtle Rock to open the rock. Uh, he doesn't want to waste the mirror transition. Yeah, and it is pretty slow, and that's even if you. And that's still the same even if you get the quick warp. Well, we do get to finally find out what was up here, uh, whether or not going up to Turtle Rock would have been just a quick one-way trip back down the mountain. It would have been Quake! So I think, or I wager, if Firewood King had chosen to come up here first earlier, this would be a neck-and-neck -neck race right now. Mm -hmm. And Tinker, I think he found the big key. Is going, going to go down the basement with this portal. Wow, when you include a Death Mountain climb, the uh, gap really feels smaller. But we obviously know no major differences in time have happened um, since we last checked in on how far apart our runners are. Um, but there's a lot of difficult rooms here in Turtle Rock. Chain Chomp rooms uh, coming up, and the Roller room is potentially lethal. Wow, and perhaps Trenter lives, um, you know, a uh, different hemisphere as I do, and it's also not feeling in the spirit. No spookiness in the basement today. Uh, fans potentially a little disappointed. Yeah, there's a uh, uh, potential exploit here that you can use fire rod to light the, to hit the switch in other rooms, so you can don't have to go bomb the upper world. And notably, that was Tentra's last bomb, so it was pretty well managed. <laughs> resources yeah there. that's that's actually very scary and, that, and when people try to do the uh you know the spooky action glitch in nmg they also try to manage their bomb count across dungeons too um and that's a real concern because if somebody tries to go for it having no bombs uh they could end up in a really bad spot um the spooky action glitch we're seeing a silver arrow strat here on vitreous but the spooky action glitch uh, was very recently discovered uh, during the spring tournament and results in about a 10 second time save in the basement by exploiting uh some sprite memory storage to mess with how the fire rod splash damage works. That's Viddy down on our way up to the uh, top of the mountain. Firewood King about halfway through Turtle Rock. Having a couple of small stumbles along the way though, a couple of rooms that have taken a couple of extra seconds. Um, every little bit is valuable to Trenter at this point. Having found a big key in the first chest in Turtle Rock, uh, Fire King is opting to grab, stole, steal the Poke King and run. Meanwhile, Tin Trinter gets dead rocked. Yep, in one of the most annoying places. Um, thankfully, does have a way to screen transition immediately. If you walk far enough away, they actually do despawn. Uh, but it had no option to do so, just so just ducked into the cave. If you're lucky using the hook shot, you can actually stun them multiple times if they're still in your path, but you gotta be like some kind of god or something. Alright, well we have nothing to look for in uh, <laughs> Mimic Cave, so we're out of there. Uh, Firework King gonna make sure that he has enough keys, pretty smart strategy as you can skip the laser bridge.
I'm kind of wondering if either of our runners are going to bother picking up Butter Sword. I mean, it's a pretty straight, you know, dash right over to Ganon's Tower, and if you can do 1 plus 1 Ganon, I'm not sure it's even valuable at this point. Hmm. Interesting question. Mm, I personally would would not because given how the items lay out, we both would think it's pretty linear actually because other than the pyramid fairy, it's one dungeon leading to next. Yeah, I mean pretty much everything is led as you know, to the same point uh, pretty consistently throughout this seed. Really nice cane dash there from Firewood King. Um, we haven't really explained it in this race, but you can press the item button and dash on the same frame uh, to do something called an item dash, and certain items behave differently. Uh, if you use the cane and then do an item dash, you can time it up really nicely so that you can hit two switches in this, at the uh, same block activation and get through that room really fast. Firewood King uh, making up some time that he may have lost earlier in the dungeon. Unfortunately, a little bit slow on the first cycle. We'll get an extra head um, SWAT attack or whatever you want to call that. Um, and a little low on health, but shouldn't have too many issues as long as we can get the last few slashes here. And the Firewood King is getting his last pendant. We're entering against tower. We have a tradition here, right? Absolutely. Out of the 22 locations in Ganon's Tower in which you can find the big key, it's your turn to guess which one it's going to be. So when you see the start in chat, start throwing in your numbers. You probably already see them streaming on your screen. Uh, 1 through 22, if you're the first one to guess it and you're a supporter or um, subscriber to Speed Gaming, supporter being, of course, 250 bits or more, um, you have a chance to be in entered into our leaderboard as well. But we want to see everybody playing. It's a fun thing that they just like to do. Uh, Blast Egg, do you have a preferred number of choice? Well, I usually choose rendering, and this time I'm going to number 8. Well, in my opinion, uh, I think the closer this race is, the more exciting it'll be uh, for me to the end. So, I'm hoping for Tile Room number 22. Uh, get your last guesses in, though, as soon as we see it on the restream that it is um, that Firewood King has entered into Gan's Tower. We'll cut that off. Well, two keys in the first two chests. Um, a lot of runners end up going right when they see this, because uh, that does give them a lot of access to... Uh, the faster item checks on the right side. There are more items on the left, though, so that's also a surefire bet. Firewood King with three so far. Uh, gonna make his way over to the four chests immediately in the next room. We consider the torch item to be chest number three. We have four more items on this side that were nothing for Firewood King, so we have checked seven locations. We'll continue on. Hopefully your uh, guess is still alive, chat. If not, uh, just be thankful that Bob survived the glitched any fairy sprite that gets destroyed if you dash into the torch. Well, my guess number eight has some toilet paper in it. Yeah, I believe that was eight, unfortunately. So the map, not of value. We're not going to find the Gens Tower uh, big key with that map. Uh, there are still quite a few locations left. Uh, we may end up seeing our runners go to the Ice Armos fight and include that, just to really rub in the whole all dungeons nonsense. Nine's a small key. The hunt continues. Next up is the Randomizer room. A room the Firewood King's heading towards that you would never see in an NMG speedrun, because it usually has absolutely nothing, but it's a pretty common place to find that big key uh, here in the randomizer.
Looks like our answer today is chest number 12. Congratulations to those in chat who were hoping for number 12. Uh, Fire we can probably feeling pretty good about going left at this point. Um, and we'll be heading up the tower real fast. What a fortunate routing decision. That worked out really well because that was pretty much most of the time the Trencher would be able to save on it. Yeah, in uh, a big key red room with left side first round is the kind of ideal situation out of the other route he could take. The right hand side first, uh, obviously waste a little time checking the right hand side. And another route is the going left first for the stealth room and torch and then go right hand side. That room is going to be the kind one of the dead last. So that's kind of an ideal situation for Firewood King here. And of course, big shout outs and congratulations to Zerzel, the one who is the first supporter or subscriber to guest 12. May you win our never ending love and affection and a free trip to the top of Ganon's Tower. Um, return flight to the pyramid not covered, unfortunately, in travel expenses. I apologize. But you will be featured on our leaderboard, of course, for this tournament. Uh, feel free to lord over the rest of chat with your um, superior 1 in 22 guests. Feel good about yourself. You should. As for the actual race in front of us, though, Firewood King is going through one of the, my favorite sections of the entire game, the Gauntlet, as we like to refer, and blazing through it quite literally with that fire rod, um, just absolutely crushing it. Um, and avoiding quite a lot of shots here. Um, we'll probably powder this bubble head. Interestingly enough, this does affect um, when and where the land molas spawn, as they are also, as we mentioned before, uh, on the same super tile as the room that we were just in. Uh, so that is something you have to consider. Firewood King adapting to that pretty uh, reasonably well, using sword spins and getting it done in two cycles. Ninja is going left side first without going right side, so we'll likely see a mirror in stealth of shrooms, and he will find, uh, unfortunately find a big key pretty late. Well, it's going to take something pretty Herculean for Trenter to uh, summit this tower faster than Firewood King. Um, there are a couple of fringe scenarios that can happen to Firewood King, though. In the next room, if he goes up the staircase in the same frame as the door he's entering shuts, uh, would actually despawn every spray in the tower. Has narrowly avoided doing so. Well, I guess he probably had a couple seconds to work with there. Uh, so that's the biggest one. Dying would probably be the only thing that would really give uh, Trenter a shot here. And Trenter actually continuing on without checking the right-hand side's uh, two small key. So... I don't think he will be locked out of the random room because the next chest, chest number 9, is a small key. But he'll, he will have to remember to pick out a small key on the right hand side before heading up. Yeah, thankfully it'll be pretty much right there, so not a crushing time loss or anything. Um, it'd be almost neutral, really. While Firewood King has not equipped his hover boots, uh, we'll be traversing that gap normally. Gonna skip that out of vanilla 20 chests as there's absolutely nothing of value we care about at this point that could be in there. Um, you know, hard container's really not even that important, with Red Mail going into Ganon's fight with Tempered Sword and Silvers. Aghanim 2, though, we're actually going to see this in sequence, thankfully. Um, same fight as earlier, except this time two after images will always shoot reflectable shots. You can actually do this in two cycles if you're really good at it. Um, that was only one hit on that second one, the first one was a triple, so the same rule applies, needs six total. Trender remembers he's going to right hand side to at least try to pick out a small key before going out to the tower. Remember, when climbing against tower, you bring one small key, or you might be very, very sorry about your life choices. Yeah, I mean, you can get pretty close to the top, um, and not having that key is a crushing blow. 
Um, you can still find it. You know, it's it's a pretty hefty gamble if you haven't seen your opponent dot done and you're like, uh, I'm against tower right now. Uh, but I've seen I've seen runners do it. You know, it's just not where I would want to be personally. You may see some numbers in chat, like the 31011, that's people counting how many cycles and how many hits per cycle. Ganon's fight here, though, there are four cycles. He's going to give us a little bit of a text chat here, and we're going to need to do 12 sword slashes or the equivalent for each of these first two phases to advance them. Uh, this can be kind of challenging with Tempered Sword, but Firewood King um, seems to have managed to pull off the first cycle just fine. And the Tempered Sword counts at each hit on table swing count two of those cycles and if on that particular tile he got two spin hits so that counts a four so he's already in third phase we also got to see something pretty nice from trenter there um, there's a bridge with those cannonballs if you jump off the bridge you'll get iframes to just dash through the whole thing it's pretty nice if you're not feeling good about uh stutter stepping through but as you mentioned before, these four hits will get us to phase four. Now we can stun Ganon with a sword slash and hit him with a silver arrow. Um, did not get torch glitch, but it should not matter. <laughs> For a second there. Wow, Firewood King, you don't gotta get close to the ledge or anything. And with luck, getting down, put your GG's in chat, and Firewood King has finished with the official SR time of 1 hour, 51 minutes, and 20 seconds. A big congratulations to Firewood King. Uh, we will reach out and hopefully get an interview out of Firewood King. In the meantime, Trenter is really not far behind him at all. Finishing up Lamb Molus 2 on the way up to the top of the uh, tower. We'll be at that Ganon fight pretty quick here. Climbing up, we do see some pretty good um, Wizro Broom is being taken care of by Trenter as well. Uh, still has to worry about the potential of the spawn of the tower, although most runners are pretty fast uh, through this, so shouldn't have too many issues. So the chat is talking about the deciding factor in this race is being the ice part hit on the purple chest and I'm inclined to agree because without that after ice past uh Firewood team likely goes to swamp and after that to rock and Mr. Meyer looking for that bow only to find only to not find it at all. Well, Trenter's going to make sure to get the uh, full restock here uh, right before Moldorm 2. Pretty much the last gas stop before Ganon himself. Um, has a pretty straightforward fight with Moldorm here to take care of. Uh, Tempered Sword, definitely a comfy place to be. You're going to do sword spins, and this may actually disrupt his cycle, but does pull it off without any sword pokes. So it gets a consistent two hits to knock down Moldorm 2. Um, as we're finishing up this race, a great time to remind everybody, um, if you've been enjoying the you know, race that these two have been putting on for you. And I certainly have. I, I'm sure Blast Egg would agree. Um, be, feel free to give these guys a follow. The, they both actually have plenty of races left in this tournament, uh, regardless of the outcome today. And I'm sure we're going to see some pretty awesome things from both of them. Yep. Uh, let's uh, both run this fourth race. So they both have 11 races to go. We'll get to see here if uh, Trenter has a little bit better fare against uh, Aghanim 2. They do have the same warp patterns unless you die to them and have to refight, which would be the worst case scenario. Uh, but you'll see pretty much the exact same stuff from both of them if they perform the same. 
Looking like a pretty similar fight as far as when we're hitting um, Aghanim 2 here, but I think we might have one extra cycle for Trender. Yep, uh, he didn't get a triple on the first cycle, so so he's going to need another cycle. Yeah, and the desync there cost him a second cycle, um, as the first Aghanim will start desynchronizing from the after images, and it becomes extremely difficult to land shots that way. Although there's a uh, pretty cool graphical glitch, if you hit Agon as he's turning to his black ball, we'll see a peach black Agon spinning and 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 getting and uh, falling down. That's interesting. Uh, Link to the Past, totally a perfect game that has no errors whatsoever, right? Totally. Hey, nothing will beat LSD blind. We'll have a Ganon fight here for Trenter as well. Hopefully going to have a pretty straightforward uh, time. We'll have a two cycle for the first uh, phase. This RNG position is a little bit frustrating sometimes uh, because it's pretty easy to walk into that flame. Um, but Trenter is getting a lot of sword strikes off and should be able to do this in one cycle, it looks like. Oh, unfortunately, just a little short. Not a problem though, we've definitely hit 12 with that, and we'll be in a phase 3, and this will be a pretty quick wrap up. And with, uh, he's going to have the same number of warps as far far with King does. That's one of the randomizer's features. Yeah, that is one of the nice things. If this is an NMG race, this could also be one of the most tense, annoying fights because you never know how many warps you're going to get. You could be on PB pace by a minute and a half at sub 130 and still <laughs> lose the entire thing. So predictability, definitely an advantage of randomizer, ironically. Uh oh, we're facing the wrong way on that arrow. Uh, Trenter was able to get the torch glitch off, which means he only has to light one of those two torches, uh, making it much easier to position those last two shots. Trenter will end up finishing up the Ganon fight here, approximately five minutes apart from uh, Fire Waking. And with that, Trenter TR finished with an official SR turn of 1 hour 57 minutes and 3 seconds. Get your GGC. In. Well, we'll reach out to Trenter TR to see if he wants to do an interview. We do have Firewood King waiting in the, um, in the lobby for us. I'm going to pull him in right now. It looks like Trenter is in the lobby as well. I'll put him in as well. All right, well, we are joined by both racers, Firewood King and Trenter underscore TR. Congratulations and GG on finishing up this wild ride of a seed. Thank you. Yeah, GG, uh, GG, Trenter. GG, Firewood. Was a good race, indeed. Yeah, that, that seed wasn't too nasty to us. Thank God. I think um, everybody watching was impressed by the execution by both of you. Um, nobody had an unintentional death. Um, neither of you really seemed to be in a position where you felt too threatened. I think there were a couple of close calls, but I gotta say, um, Fire King, I gotta have to ask you this first. When you found that hint that, uh, that led you to that bow, I mean, where was your head at? I mean, did you feel like you just, you know, stole the one item that you needed? Um, I, I realized that hint was, was probably going to be important. By that point, I had already found the single arrow, so I knew I wasn't going to get the single arrow unique item troll. And I think by that point, I also had, like, all the fetch quests, right? The mushroom and the powder and all of that. So, so that was a pretty good hint. Um, I forget exactly where it was, but, but I definitely realized that that was something important when I saw it. And we saw, you know... A pretty large amount of volatility in the routing between the two of you after we had finished up Aghanim and after we had you know better access to the Dark World. Um, Trenter, I noticed that you had explored Palace of Darkness with that potion glitch relatively early on in the race, and it made it kind of hard for us to keep track of who is ahead of, of who. Um, what led to your decision to um, you know go through with that, knowing that you didn't have the the bow to work with? Were you just looking for information, or did you think you might have found something of progression behind that? Uh, yeah, it was kind of both. Like, 
first of all, I thought maybe I find progression. Well, the hint gave me a little bit. I, I'm not I'm not disappointed by that, but like I hope to find some kind of progression, like the hook shot or something. Or at that moment, I didn't have the gloves, so I was like, maybe that the mitts are here, so I can determine where the bow is. But like, I only get the armor upgrade, and I'm I'm kind of disappointed. There's nothing in there. It was totally useless. <sighs> So well, I couldn't narrow really down. Exciting to watch on our end. I mean, because we had to watch Firewood King do that completely when you had already done a lot of this dungeon. Uh, the same sort of thing happened when Firewood King, you would end up going into uh, Ice Palace relatively early compared to Trenter. And finding that hook shot, I mean, it might have been the, one of the last things you found in that dungeon, but that was a good two, three dungeons ahead of Trenter. Um, up until you guys had been pretty much narrowing down Quake, we didn't really know who would be in the lead. Yeah, that was that was that kind of seed, right? You know, it's just you know, I didn't, I didn't, I I almost went into swamp before Pod and Eastern, because um, I got the bow and I was like, well, I'm right here, I should go into swamp. And then I was like, no, I'd rather, I'd rather have the chance of go moding swamp. So I went into Pod and Eastern. So I could have been in, I could have been in swamp a little earlier than I was, but I, I decided I was going to try and save it for go mode. And I guess I got to go mode it after the first chest, so it, it ended up working out. And there was a situation where if um, either of you had gone to Swamp a little sooner and found that Quake, it may have potentially given you reason to not check all of Ice Palace. Um, we noted that earlier on, but um, all in all, I mean, we saw you know pretty excellent routing from both of you. It was from different circumstances for different reasons. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, Fire Wicking, you put off um, Desert, which we saw Trenter do earlier. I mean, how close were you to skipping that desert ledge? We thought you weren't even going to grab that sword. Oh no, I was, uh, I was, I was definitely going to check the ledge. I knew I hadn't seen it before, so uh, I was definitely going to check it, and um, I was glad that I did. <laughs> um, were you trying to pair that with Meyer? Is that why you put off the desert for that long? Yeah, that was part of it. Um, that was part of it. Um, I think, I think early on, I almost, I almost forgot that, like, I, I. I could have done desert, but you know it didn't. It didn't end up hurting me all that badly. There was nothing in desert, so yeah, it was kind of interesting how it worked out. Both of you ended up doing Skull Woods with Master Sword. Uh, Trenter had found the desert, or you found the desert ledge sword and got that before Skull Woods, right? Mm, yeah, I went to Agina very early on in the game and checked the desert ledge, and I knew there was a sword. And I actually. There was actually the moment when I got the book, I was like, I want that Master Sword right now, because <laughs> the combination of items actually would have enabled Bumble's tablet to have a glove upgrade, and I don't want to risk that. Yeah, that would be a pretty lousy um, sequence of events. It was, it was pretty interesting to see both of you check Lumberjack so early as well, as we've seen a lot of runners in the past, um, you know, kind of skip over that um, and not think so much about, you know, doing it because you have to have the boots for it and some people don't even worry but uh i wanted to ask you first trenter what was going through your mind when you saw that hammer my first thought was oh how fitting in comparison to yesterday when i had to hammer agonim now i get the hammer through agonim like uh <laughs> seems right <laughs> well what about you firewood king what was going through your mind when you saw it uh yeah i was i was uh pretty pretty interested in that that was that was an unusual thing i uh i normally don't do that lumberjack check but if i if i come out of escape and i don't have enough bombs to be comfortable going into kakariko i head up that way mostly with the intention of getting tree poles and bush crabs and stuff like that um so i normally wouldn't have made that check but i'm glad that i did that was a good thing to know about aganim aganim gave us access to the hammer and the flute so that was a, a very very interesting required aganim play this seed Yeah, I would definitely say that the overall logic, pretty fascinating overall. It must have been very frustrating for both of you to not have the Zora money and then come back for the Fable Quarter Heart. Yeah, I, uh, I, I almost tried to go to Catfish without the glove the first time I got into the Dark World with the Moon Pearl, and then I remembered not to do that, so I didn't embarrass myself terribly. Mm, I was thinking about... Should I farm the uh, the other 20 rupees right now? And I was like, killing some of the Zoras, but no drops. And I was like, 
You know what? I get here, I get back here when I have catfish. Yeah, I uh, I also I <laughs> I've never actually gone to the magic bat before and not had enough magic. It just didn't even occur to me that like that's the sort of thing I have to look out for. <laughs> Getting the magic bat and not having powder. Not having the magic to use the powder. It's always a bad day when not only can you not fake powder, you can't even fake fake powder. Well, I would definitely say that this has been exciting to watch. Um, I think anybody with some sense in their mind should be following these runners so they can see the rest of this tournament. Of course, the speed gaming channels. Um, you know, this is just the start of the group phase we were pretty early on into. I believe this is the fourth race for both of you. Is that right? Yeah, this uh, is my fourth. This was my fifth. That was actually my fifth already. So roughly a third of the way to go for these members of this group. Uh, quite a few groups and quite a few races ahead. Um, now, Firewood King and Trenter, is this your first race between each other? Yeah, this is our first race. I uh, I picked yeah, these settings. Said. Yeah, I picked these settings. Yeah, so both of these two still have uh, two other races against each other. This isn't a best of three situation. Uh, you know, Firewood King could be looking for all three, and Trenter could end up uh, reverse sweeping it, so to speak. Um, we will definitely have all three. So, um, And the next one will be at Trenter's Whim. Uh, now, of course, I'm not going to ask Trenter what settings he's going to pick, but I'll ask you this: um, Are you keeping any curveballs in the uh, in the, in the back of you know the shed? You got anything uh, cooking up that you know is secret? I actually, yes, yes, I actually have something, and uh, people uh, will be surprised. L let's put it this way. <laughs> oh boy! Well, we'll I... be looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds just great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll have to stay tuned for that. Um, with that being said, though, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to ask you guys. Um, Blast Egg, do you have any questions you'd like to ask them? Well, I have one question. So that's about the last decision of a seat. Uh, when you guys went down the Swamp uh, Ice Palace, you have a hook shot. You were looking for Quick. You have the Swamp Palace items or the East Dark Death Mountains. Uh, what? 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 What's going through your mind when you make the decision to go to Swamp? Uh, I, I went to Swamp because I, I just had this nasty feeling in the back of my head that Turtle Rock would also be Quake. And I just I, I just didn't want to make the climb up Dark Death Mountain, only get access to uh, only get access to Hookshot Cave and, and Super Bunny Cave. I figured I'd rather go into Swamp and, and be able to even if I have to even if I have to check things like left swamp or pyramid fairy I'll at least only have to make one climb up death mountain well what I, the hint I, I don't know where exactly where that was IP I think where basically or, or Eastern where it said like the big swamp big key um, that actually led me to believe that uh, like if you get that in the swamp big key is always in the big key chest uh, like in the big key itself, uh, big chest, and like I was like, okay, if it's there, that's one less location. I was like, okay, then I only have to do it once. I don't have to go back in it. So that was actually my decision to go in very very early, like compared to that. Wow, well, thanks for your answers. Well, any final thoughts? I just uh, GG to Trenter. Thanks to YouTube, Blast Egg, you Diamondistic, for commentating. Thank you to our uh, tracker today, whose name escapes me at the moment. And uh, thanks to everybody for watching. I can only agree on that. GG to everyone. Thank you all for um, commentating and tracking. And also thank you to Speed Gaming for restreaming. And to extend those thanks um, to our tracker, Phantom Black Ice, um, doing the the button pushing in the background, making sure we're all held accountable and uh, saying the right stuff. Um, and also like to echo the same sentiments towards Blast Egg. Thank you for sharing the cast with me. Um, and of course, all of you for tuning in and watching us. Um, now, if you're looking for more A Link to the Past randomizer on the schedule today, uh, we do actually have a match at 6.20 p.m. on Speed Gaming 4. Um, and if you're looking for other things here on Speed Gaming, the next thing you'll see on this channel is Assassin's Creed Odyssey Showcase. Um, you also have 
a number of different games going on um, on Speed Gaming 2. The next Link to the Past randomizer match, actually, I missed this one, is uh, on Speed Gaming 2 at 4.30. Uh, so lots to watch in this tournament and also on the Speed Gaming family and networks and channels. Um, plenty going on today. And as the rest of the week and the rest of the month and um, the year go out, because we're probably not going to hit brackets until around New Year, I believe, uh, based on what we've seen. So uh, stay tuned, folks. Strap in. Um, plenty of Zelda 3 randomizer head. Uh, I've been Uday Monistic, joined today by Blastag. Uh, Blastag, I'll let you close this out. So, I've been Blastag, and thank you for your watching, and have a nice day of random and all other, ga other games here on Speed Gaming. Good night. Uh, good night for we'll me, that is. <laughs>